I'm gonna, we're going to draw from J.J. Hertog's Book of Knowledge, Keys of Enoch. We started talking again about uh, the seventh key. Did, did last week's lesson make sense? Was it over the top? Not too bad. Not too bad. Did it make sense? A bit. A bit. Did it make sense, Sandy? <coughs> Okay, because we're going to continue, and you know when I when I read this part, actually when I was meditating, I just kind of I was going over the notes in my head, and you know it's it's. Let me read this first. When her talk was taken to Orion, he beheld within trapezium Orion the light layers of great intensity which revealed a series of inner heavens collect inner heavens collective forming the foundation for birth and regeneration now it continues but uh, that's where i stopped at but trapezium if you're wondering what that is and as i as i was thinking about this as this was moving through my mind during the meditation you know in in the constellation Orion, and I think it's the belt, there's these very bright stars. And you know how the mind has these habits of connecting the dots, even when we're not trying to. So some of these dots that were connected would appear, could appear to be a trapezium. And what a trapezium is, is it has it's like a square, it is slant with one side shortened because only two sides of a trapezium are parallel. So when you look up at these stars up there, you might see these little openings here where you've got one star here, one over there, one here, one here, and you got two lines. You go up this way and then one goes and then the other two, you know, are strange. Just to give you an explanation of what a trapezium is, and that's because, only because it starts out like that. So then I can see her top, perhaps out in the middle of the United States or Canada. I don't, I can't recall what country he's from. Looking up at the stars and meditating. This meditation is a practice of most of the religions. And I can imagine him focusing on one of those little openings there. And since he is a scientist of a sort, he would, you know, he'd use scientific words to describe that. But I want to take us to the idea of these light layers of great intensity, because this is a common theme in all the religions I've ever read about. And just to give you an example, even some of these myths, because in this example here, we've heard of, you've heard of the wanderings of Ceres? Yes, though, maybe some people might, uh, uh, who else would that be, would qualify? Persephone, when she was taken underground, or, yeah, looking for her daughter. Enjoying her all the time. So they've got it with the nine days of series wanderings. And these wanderings are said to represent rings which the soul passes through during its descent or ascent. We talked a little bit about this last week. And Reverend Thomas talked a little bit about this the week before, I think. I get lost after, you know, after last week. I just, it's somewhere back there. So we have another myth about Prometheus, which alludes to, again, nine rings that the soul travels through. There is a hermetic myth that's very similar to this, only instead of rings, they use robes, seven robes. If anybody's read uh, Blavatsky's Secret Doctrine, 
she mentions in there about robes. She also talks about the breath of Brahma being a type of cycles and everything. And, you know, spiritualists, well, we use the term spheres, or the old spiritualists did. Today, the term is dimensions. But, you know, heavens, they describe the heavens as essentially being above. And what is above? Everything is higher above. So if we've got the higher dimensions above us, then of course the lower ones would be beneath us and naturally that would be called what? A little louder? Hell. Yeah, hell, exactly. Nine gates up, there's seven gates. Well, gates and circles might get that confused. We're gonna talk about gates. We're gonna talk about gates. And I selected an example here, and this is about Ishtar. And if you haven't heard the name, Ishtar was considered the amorous queen of heaven, who died and was reborn. Now, she's also tied in with the god uh, Tammuz, I think is the name. Of course, I could be mispronouncing all this stuff, which I tend to do. So she went to these gates. She came to the place of seven walls where the dead rest, unchanging and in everlasting gloom. Now, as we're talking about this, I don't want you to think of the, where the dead rests as being the grave or a crypt or anything like that, because we experience these unchanging, everlasting states of gloom right here. We don't have to be buried in a grave or any place like that. We don't need all these extra myths. They use these myths about the underworld because it's a good metaphor. If you're not feeling good, you're feeling down. You're feeling kind of under. So it makes sense, right? So, Ishtar comes to the first gate where her crown is taken away. What might the crown be? Where do we draw power from? Intellect. The intellect. So her power was gone. And what is power? Power is the ability to influence others. Do you ever feel like that? Ever experience that? You just feel like you have no control. You can't get people to do what you want and everything. So at the second gate, her eight rayed star was removed from her neck. She had this big necklace here. Of rays that just kind of stuck out. Where is this? Oh, oh, man. It's one of the tarot cards. Eight stars. I think it is the star card. But there are eight stars, eight rays that radiate. And what does radiating, well, emanate? What comes to mind with that? Thought. Yes. The... It's called the glory of God. And some of the spiritual teachers had this glory of God radiating from them. I'm just kind of... The aura? You can call it aura if you want. 
in the medieval paintings of all the holy people, they had these halos around them. That's the glory of God. That's that light radiating outward. So her, her necklace was taken away and she was no longer radiant. Of course, you know, proper term would probably be she was blue or melancholy. You know, I just kind of blah and, and, and you stay, you're visiting with a friend and they say, what's wrong with you? And you say, well, what do you mean what's wrong with you? It's just, you're not right. There's something <laughs> wrong. You're no longer radiating because when we feel good, we radiate. Our emotions just kind of radiate out from us. Mediums will have difficulty giving a message to someone who is depressed. And why? Because that power that's within them is not radiating outward. It's drawing inward. Within the realm of metaphysics, they call them psychic vampires because they just seem to suck the life out of you because they're here. They're pulling in. So she was no longer radiant. She no longer felt good about herself. Does that make sense? Does that sound familiar? Oh, yes. Yes? No, maybe? And at the next gate, she surrendered her gold and lapis. Well, well her bracelet. Lapis lazuli. Lazuli, that's it. I'm always mispronouncing stuff, you know. Oh. Yeah. And they represent what? Emotions. <clears throat> well, they are emotions, yes, yes. The gold represents one thing. The... The lapis lazuli, lapis. is that what's it? Lapis lazuli, whatever, represents. Yes, but represents Donna. <laughs> Donna. <laughs> Intuition. Wisdom. It's making sense. What do you think so far? Any comments, Ray? No? I'm <laughs> right here. <laughs> so it's like... Uh... Or, you know, she's giving up all these like positive pieces of herself. Well, yeah, you can say that. She's giving it up. Why? Why is she giving it up? Why? All her strength. That's a good question. She has to in order to get the Okay. You're not gonna make me sad. All right. She's okay. Going to get, all right. From here to there. Okay. Perfect. Well, I think she's very similar to the um, series of Persephone and Kurt. She looked for something. They're all the same in all actuality. Yeah, <laughs> so, like, honestly, one of us would never know that she has to give up all these powers and goodness and strengths in order to get lower, one gate down lower, becoming more base. Okay. That's good. Any thoughts, Sandy? Um, I heard most of what Beth and Sharon said, but is she giving it up to start over? That's a good question. <laughs> because I don't know what the purpose of giving, you know, like we're not into the discussion and want to know what the purpose was. That's a good question. Let me let me come back to the beginning here because I probably I think I missed part of this. So the light layers of great intensity, which revealed a series of inner heavens collectively, 
forming the foundation for birth and regeneration. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Cool. You're getting okay. it up to the reincarnation. Mm. Yeah. Maybe I shouldn't stop. I was going to say, can I just stop? But I guess not. Well, I guess I. Yes, you're on the right track. Okay. All right. You're on the right track, but you're moving in the wrong direction. So she has has surrendered her, her radiance. She has surrendered her intuition. She has surrendered let's see radiance. Intuition, wisdom. wisdom. So she comes to the next gate, and her shoes are ready. So what happens when you have no shoes? <laughs> exactly. And why? Cut your feet. Okay, cut your feet. Why else? If I need to speak up, Ken, let me know. Okay. So if we don't have our feet, our shoes on, we're more likely to double. What's our balance? Exactly. And at the next gate, her veil was removed. What do we do with a veil? Think, think. The high priestess. Of course, I may have that wrong. I may be thinking of a different card. Well, you kind of hide behind it. Exactly. Like the truth is hidden. Exactly. It's like part of the mystery. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That made sense in your classes. I'm surprised because I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised I can remember this. But yeah. The veil represents mystery. So it's not that there's nothing mysterious about you anymore, but something has been revealed. And then she came to the next gate and her robes were removed. Totally vulnerable now. Not quite. No? No, just her robes. Says nothing about clothes. That's the next game. All right. <laughs> That's the next game. How many layers is she wearing? <laughs> but. Six <laughs> for out an earring. There you go. I'm surprised they didn't have earrings in here. But her robes were removed. Who wears robes? Clergy. Clergy. Yeah. How about a suit? Yeah. A suit would qualify. However, if I should appear like this up here, that's a whole lot different, isn't it? What's the message? More casual. More casual, but here's here's an even better one. Okay, here's an even better one. You get up in the morning, and you know you're not really paying a whole lot of attention to what you're doing and such. And you know you get your clothes on, and you're, oh crap. <laughs> Oh, that's my tag. Yes. Every time I do that, my customer said, Well, you had a 50-50 chance, and you screwed it up. And I know sometimes I put a label on the back, you know, make sure it's right. And then I put it on, I still get it wrong. <laughs> put away his person. But, but we all look like to look good. 
And if we don't look good, we look bad. But looking good gives us a sense of pride or a sense of dignity. Or an office. At the time that was put together, robes represented an office of high esteem. So her dignity was taken away. And what's left? I can it on underneath the robe. Okay. Or pulled up. Her clothes, her garments. And when that's gone, everything is revealed. What comes with embarrassment? Pardon? Humility. Hum Humility. Hum 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 <laughs> Since he's great. He is great. You. 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 Humiliation. Oh. Okay. Humility wouldn't quite cut it because, you know, we all look at humility as something to aspire towards. But hum humiliation is not something we want to aspire towards. Yes? Right. Ken? Oh, I don't know if you're going to be far off the wall. Go ahead. They're usually pretty good. Well, you know, I... Uh... Younger days, I was pretty good bodybuilder. I got some really good things. I look pretty good. Uh, you know, rode our Army Schwarzenegger. But you you cover up the lot. You go into a locker room and it's back and forth. And you can see some people on the other side. The paper goes on to the locker room. Some people say, that lavish, oh, please. This is not God. The most perfect fight. Not the Greek Roman idea. But, you know, when they leave, they put the clothes on before they go over. And nobody really knows what they look like. You know, so it's, it's, the clothing thing is, is psychologically uh, pretty profound. You know, I know some things too. You're talking about the maps. And, um, I haven't even felt that sometimes by a certain amount of that kind of food and going to get smaller and over the scene. You put your glasses on, you can put your glasses on. It does cover things up a little bit. I mean, you still see through them, but you can't hide behind the glasses because it's a really bad guy. Yeah, because they've been a slide. So many of that. It's all psychological. Yeah, it is. Has anybody experienced all of this stuff? I'm sure we have it one way or another. We're on our whole lives. I'm sure we have. I think that's kind of But that's not an answer. You want specifics? <laughs> Just a yes. Just a yes. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> just a yes. Yeah. Ah, how about you, Sandy? Oh, I'm sure experienced, yes, through through my life, I, I, I'm sure. I can't think of anything specific right now, but oh, um, no. definitely. Don't want to admit to anything specific. Well, yeah, I'm sure among the specifics, there's things that you could tell and things you can't. <laughs> but yes, humiliation, shame, sure. Sure, definitely. Yeah. Oh, I'll share a little bit of information about myself. When my brain did its thing, which they suspect to be a brainstem stroke, let's see, we 
we began with anybody? You remember where we began? Well, I didn't tell you there was a pop quiz, did I? <laughs> we began with unchanging and everlasting gloom. So I have awoken, awoken in the morning to do my little routine, exercising and everything. And the first thing I do is I reach up and I say, Tort, I don't feel very well. Down I go. Down I go. So I'm in this, this everlasting gloom because I have no clue. I'm scared. Because I don't know what's happening. I don't know how long I was on the floor. I crawled to the bed. No, I crawled to the phone. And I called for help. My brother answered. And he came eventually. Because he's in Benton Harbor and I'm in Niles. I crawl to the bed. Everlasting gloom. And, you know, the crown is taken away. My power is taken away. Because I can't think. So this gloom becomes even darker. I cannot think. During this process of recovery, because you see me now, and as you look upon me now, it's, it's all of this is just hard for you to picture, hard for you to imagine. But everywhere I went, people looked right through me. I asked the question, they addressed the person who was with me. They did not see me. They chose not to see me. So my radiance was gone. That gloom got even darker. Insight and wisdom, her bracelets. What am I going to do? I'm stuck in this form, this body, this, this, this decrepit experience. I'm caught up in this. And I can't see my way out. Stumble, I can't get out what's in here. The words just are stuck. It's like being on a, on a highway and all of a sudden you've got this construction zone. Right lane closed, left lane closed. Everybody's funneling to the middle lane. And you've got this traffic jam. These are thoughts all caught up in this traffic jam and they're all funneling. So they can't get out. Again, this gloom is getting darker. This is the difficult part, the veil being removed. Because once the veil is gone, nothing is hidden, right? Oh, crap, what if I'm stuck like this my rest of my life? Now I have to deal with it. How am I going to deal with it? And it just gets worse because people don't see me. They talk right through me. I can't get out what I'm thinking. I can't express myself. There's no dignity there. I don't even want to go out. <clears throat> and then the last thing embarrassment ashamed why me why me now naturally if we go down 
these seven gates to get in or to get down. What have we got to do to get up? Up one rung at a time. Climb up one rung at a time. What does this mean? Sharon? Oh, I know. I'm kind of thinking like, okay. I'm going to have to relearn and relearn and relearn and practice. Practice. Yeah, just practice. Yeah. What are your thoughts, Sandy? I I agree with what they said. A rebirth actually came to mind too. <laughs> Probably kind of the same thing, but Sandy did good rebirth. Yeah. Rebirth is a very good term. It's much better than starting over because rebirth, what happens in order for you to be rebirthed? You're at the very bottom. How do you get up? How do you get out of the out of it? Yes, it's one rung at a time. Change how you think. Absolutely. Bingo. You have to change how you think. So, what was it that he said? A series of inner heavens collected in all the myths and religions that are out there they talk about all these these rings these dimensions that we have to go through and we're always aspiring to these higher dimensions oh yes if i could just get there let me die so i can get there and chances are pretty good they may have it all wrong what do you think Yes. Yeah. yeah. It just kind of stirred me up here. I kind of my thoughts are disjointed, but I hooked onto that all. Um, we always think of people who believe. I mean, I always think of people who believe in reincarnation as being more spiritually oriented, spiritually higher, elevated, blah blah blah. But you know, I came across something somewhere, some book I read, like you, that not really, because. If you reincarnate, it's a failure because you had to come back. Yeah. Hmm. Think about it. You got that wrong. Hmm. They well, got okay, it. You told me about it. They got it wrong, I should say. They got it wrong. I, I wrap it up. I wrap it up with that. I, I, look, I look at it as in a more in a, a positive way, as more of a, a negative way. Yeah, me and and just because you just because you're reincarnated doesn't mean you failed. You may have done really well learning what you had to for that one. Yeah. But the next one could be something totally different that you need to go through, um, not connected with that, but a different life experience. So now I don't I don't look at it as you know, failure. I I think I look at it as just on the road, different path, different way to achieve the we're all trying to get here. And there's a lot of roads to here, and we have to get on all of them. And yeah, kind of, that's kind of here it. I, is unattainable. I'm not. Well, I'm not John's aura. Okay? <laughs> yeah. But I, in the vein of where I read that as it being a failure, it piqued my interest, and I thought about it. And there was the mention that you can choose to come back if you want to. I know. Okay. You don't believe that either. I believe okay. that's a myth too. And this is why. Right. This okay. is why. Well, I was going to give you a say this one wasn't failed you. It's it's not linear, so I'm, I'm I don't want to I think if you're climbing a mountain, it's a very big mountain, and I can't climb this mountain in one day. So I will get up the path to a certain point and I'm going to.